welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with a fondness for fabulous fibs. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a chef who likes to experiment with food, as do I. Sometimes I put the beans under the toast. It's Heston <laughs> Blumenthal. <laughs> and a comedian who's so posh he employs a chauffeur to deliver his punchlines. It's Miles <laughs> Jump. <laughs> and on Lee Max's team tonight, a member of the Fox acting dynasty. Her cousin is Lawrence Fox. Her uncle is James Fox. Her second cousin is Basil Brush. It's Amelia Fox! <laughs> and a man who's gone from a long-haired layabout dreaming of becoming a comedian to a long-haired layabout who actually is a comedian, Ed Byrne. And so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've got no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Miles, you're first up tonight. After a visit to a school fete, I had to tell my neighbour their cat had been run over, while my own face was painted like a kitten. <laughs> 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 Please, team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please be true. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> you, you were at the school fate as what? As a as a dad, or were you working on the stall doing the face painting or anything? Or were you uh, I, I, there was a sort of shift, so I, I did help uh, with, what, with one of the stalls, but I was also there just as a as a parent. What was the stall you were helping on? Bric-a-brac. Bric-a-brac. <laughs> Bric-a-brac. How did you find out the cat had been killed? Because it was uh, killed regrettably close to our house. What kind of cat was it? A tabby cat. And how was it killed, sorry? Unfortunately, it was a truck that shouldn't have been... Uh, it was one of the very... Not just a normal size lorry, a very, very long uh, lorry that should not really have thought that it could drive around those streets but was attempting to, and it flattened. Um... So you actually saw the lorry flatten the cat and then you had to go and tell the neighbour? Uh, yeah. I feel like this is the truth, except for the part about the truck and that actually you killed this cat. <laughs> <laughs> what was the cat called? Uh, she was called, um... She was called Jenny. Jenny! Jenny, the cat. Jenny! Jenny. What was the owner called? Tiddles? <laughs> <laughs> no, in a horrible <laughs> name mix-up, <laughs> they started calling each other by the Jenny, wrong name. <laughs> if you want to find, you know, find fault with someone's cat naming logic, you've got to have a go at my neighbours. Well, they're Just grieving. Say. Let's leave them out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have Did you, you kill their cat? I didn't. I just, I you say you didn't kill the cat. You might have been partly responsible because you were there dressed as a cat when it happened. It might have been the driver of the truck. dressed as a cat. I has just... <laughs> has looked over and gone, size of that cat. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the little cat crossed in the road has gone, is that your mummy? <laughs> <laughs> Those two incidents combined, you've killed little oh. Jennifer to give her her full name. <laughs> no, just... Either me. that or it was a hit aimed for you and the description given was, <laughs> looks a bit like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> did you pick the cat up oh, and take it to the neighbours, or did you just point to the cat and say, that's where your cat is? <clears throat> no. uh, I, didn't, I didn't pick it up. What happened when they answered the door? Talk us through that conversation, that must have been very awkward. Yeah, had you still, at this point, not remembered that your face was painted like no, that? No, I didn't remember until after I told them, and then I went home and went, oh, I just had to tell so-and-so. So, -and -so. so you, they've opened the door. Can you remember anything about the first few words of that conversation? Well, it was very awkward. I've never had to do that before, so I, I said... Meow! <laughs> <laughs> They said hello in a sort of cheery, or oh, maybe he's come round for yeah. some sort of jolly reason. Well, no one gave him that impression. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, I'm really sorry, but I'm afraid that I've, I've just seen um, uh, Jenny get, get run over. And they said... What? Did, what did they say then? Oh, sorry, you're they acting. They said what? I thought you were acting. <laughs> sorry. I genuinely thought you didn't understand the question, but you were in character. Sorry. Yeah. If we get to a point where you're asking questions I don't understand, something oh. has happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like that one. <laughs> uh, and they said, thank you very much for telling us. And then I went back into my house, I lived next door, and... Did you go through the front door or...? Back... <laughs> <laughs> when you realised you had your makeup on still at home? My, which my wife pointed out to me. I came home and I said, oh, this dreadful thing's just happened. And my wife said, you know that you've still got your face painted like a kitten? And I said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you and your wife look at each other in shock and just feel terrible, or did you both instantly start laughing? She laughed immediately. I'm... She's an awful woman, though. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Ignore the Irish man. <laughs> you're the best female truck driver in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you right, Miles? You, you, you know what that is? Fur balls. <laughs> 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 so what are you thinking, Lee? Does this have the, uh, the ring of truth for you? Uh, Amelia, what do we think? I think it's a total lie. Do you? Do Not you? even an, an ounce of truth in this? Not for me. It's going round to the neighbours and you haven't really actually told us anything about the neighbours. You haven't talked about who it was who answered the door and how you then got to talk to them. Mm. Oh, right, well, Paul answered the door. Paul. Oh. And Paul is married to... Paul is not married. Oh, but you did say them. You told them that their cat had died. Yeah, there are a number of ways in which people cohabit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. You don't believe I it? Don't believe you it. don't believe it. Are right. we going to say, say lie? Say OK. Lie. <clears throat> Miles, truth or lie? Oh, ye of little... <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> 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 yes, it's a lie. Uh, Miles didn't have to tell his neighbour their cat had been run over while his face was painted like a kitten. Ed Byrne, it's your turn. I once found a steak pie down my trousers. <laughs> David's team. No further questions. <laughs> was it hot or cold? Uh, uh, by the time I found it, it was body temperature. You know, it had been so there. From which direction had it reached body temperature? Uh, from piping hot downwards no, or I, from cold upwards? I think it was. I think it had gone from room temperature to my body temperature. I was actually sitting <laughs> on the tube. And I realised that there was a steak pie <laughs> which, uh, in, which, my, in my trousers. Which line were you on? Actually, you know, it, was, it wasn't the London tube, it was the, uh, the Glasgow Underground, actually. More oh, specifically. Okay. So you're sitting there. Yeah. Uh, what time of day is it? It's, uh, it was morning. I was on my way home and I felt uncomfortable and I put my hand down the so back. So it's of... early morning, you're on way home from some sort of I had, party? Or I what? was a student and were I think you... that answers all of the questions. Were you drunk? <laughs> I was not drunk at the time, just because I was in Glasgow. No. Um, I no, because you're time. Irish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that takes the curse off it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I surmise what had happened was I had fallen asleep at a, in someone else's living room <laughs> and somebody thought it would be funny to put a steak pie, not just in my trousers, actually in my... Pants. It was in your pants. Yes. Was it at the front, <laughs> back, it was or side? I would say what has happened is I've fallen asleep face down and it has been shoved down the back. It was down the down the back. But I tell you, whoever it was made an effort. They they pushed it. It was it had become it was down in the gusset. Yeah. <laughs> in fairness, I don't think they were really my friends. I sort of inveigled my way back into somebody's house that without really having been invited. You know, somebody was a group of people going back. And I think I wasn't entirely a welcome addition to the evening. So you wake up in the flat. Yes. You've been asleep face down. Yes. So you've not yet felt the effects of the pie. That's right. You stand up. Yes. Still you don't, not aware of it. You don't feel that there's something <coughs> extra. No. Uh, you're talking about a man... <laughs> talking about a man who's already carrying quite a lot of weight down there. Right. OK. <laughs> so it's, it's only added maybe 2 3% to the general wealth yes. of matter. Yes. <laughs> and then you walk... Two to Presumably from this flat to this <laughs> underground station. Yeah. Yeah. You don't notice on that walk no. that there's something no. not I may part well. of you. For all I know, at that, I have been shedding pie crust. <laughs> like <laughs> something from the Great Escape. <laughs> Wasn't it smelling? Were you not like walking along constantly going, there's a Greg's everywhere around here? <laughs> <laughs> so then you get on the train. What point do you well, notice it, the pie? You know, it's only a five minute eight-minute journey then to my stop, yeah. so at some point there, while sitting... It's only then while well, sitting at down. At some point! <laughs> it's not the moment <laughs> you sat down no, on a pie. No, it definitely... That was. wasn't the time, no. it just... You gradually became aware. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't like, believe that. I it was the... Like, you've got a pie in your pants. <laughs> David, even if you don't believe it, you don't need to be angry about it. <laughs> they're all, they're I'm all... trying to break it. <laughs> What sort of pants were you wearing? If that's not too sexy a question. I don't want to sound like I, I'm making things up, but I don't remember exactly what... You don't remember what pants, pants. you found a pie in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's not a mental image that stayed with you. Well, I the, was, the, the I type of pants, pants from which the pie emerged. No, because... I would remember that. They didn't emerge. I was sitting on the, on the underground and I went... And I just sort of... <laughs> I put my hand down. And oh, can you imagine the face of the person opposite? <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the... I've eaten it, yeah. 
So what are you going to say, David? Which way? Well, I think it's full of plausible detail, such as they didn't want you at the party. <laughs> We think it's true that All he right. did have a pie in his okay, pants. OK, Ed, was it the truth or were you telling us a lie? To my eternal shame, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm afraid that was true. Uh, Ed did once find a steak pie down his trousers. <laughs> our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Rodney. <laughs> Miles, what is Rodney to you? This is uh, Rodney. I was so excited to see him driving my old car that I gave him a cheery honk and he drove into a hedge. <laughs> Heston, what is Rodney to you? This is Rodney. He helped me break the world record for the most sit-ups in two minutes. <laughs> and finally, David, your relationship with Rodney? Uh, this is Rodney and he had to retrieve my shoe when a drunk man threw it at the Skittles in a bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. So, it's Miles's distracted driver, it's Heston's sit-up supporter, or David's bowling buddy. Lee's team, where would you like to start? Right, uh, let's start with uh, Heston. Yes. Let's start with Heston. This, <clears throat> this, this two-minute sit-up world record, how many did you do? Uh, was 128. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You did more than one a second? Yes. Because <laughs> I'd been looking at this for two years before, because I was doing about 3,000 a day. You were doing 3,000 <laughs> sit-ups well, a, a day. A and that's still not even the weirdest thing he's ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you do a sit-up now for us? Actually, I can't, because I, I am having a hip replacement. I've got well, I'm not surprised hip. the amount of time so you I do sit-ups do sit in two minutes. <laughs> what are you going to do with your old hip? Because I reckon you should make a casserole out of it. <laughs> How did, how did Rodney help in a sit-up session? Well, I needed somebody to spot me. What does that mean? It's basically somebody making sure you're doing the correct sit-up and then counting. So he's uh, like the, the ref? Yes. <laughs> All right, who would you like to quiz next? Yeah. Uh, OK, we'll go for uh, Miles. Could you just remind us of the statement? Yeah, uh, driving along, I was very excited to see uh, my old car, which Rodney was driving, and I gave a cheery honk, uh, and as a result of that, uh, he steered into a hedge. Did you sell it to him? No, I sold it to a dealership. And then he bought it off the dealer? Uh, yeah. Where exactly were you? When he went into the hedge? Yes. Oh, uh, Cornwall. You saw your old car? Yeah. You don't know the guy driving it? No. And you think, let's honk at him, because <laughs> he's driving our old car? Yeah. And he'll be able to tell the difference between a cheery honk <laughs> and, a, and a get out of the way, what are you doing, you crazy fool, or, and a, oh, that's our old car. Or have you got a selection of honks? Is there, yeah. like, an aggressive one and one that does, you know, I could do? Um, <laughs> in retrospect, it wasn't well thought through. No, you're right. <laughs> what speed were you going? Well, we would have been going... It was windy lane, so probably somewhere in the region of 35, 40 miles an hour. Oh, was he badly then... injured? No, he wasn't badly injured, but he was... He wasn't as relaxed about it as he looks now. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Did you then get out of the car and... Well, I, yeah, I, I felt very guilty. Stopped the car and I got out and I said... I'm, and he went, what are you doing? And I, I said, I'm, I'm really sorry that we... What, the reason I honked was because you are... We, this used to be our car. Yeah. You're driving our old car. <laughs> At what point did he say, but why have you got a cat's face on? I know. <laughs> How do you behave if you see a man and he's going out with a girl you used to go out with? What? <laughs> We're not talking about big numbers here. <laughs> well, whatever a nickname was, we don't care. <laughs> OK, what about David's statement? You, David... You'll have to remind us, David. <laughs> he had to retrieve my shoe when a oh. drunk man threw it at the Skittles in a bowling alley. What? Oh. OK, well, first of all, yes, let's what were on. you doing in a bowling alley? <laughs> Second of all, what were you doing in possession of your own shoe in a bowling alley? And thirdly, they're not called skittles, they're called pins. But apart from that, so far it's all adding up. <laughs> Surely your shoe was behind a counter somewhere. Well, precisely, it was until just before it was chucked. 
Oh, it wasn't the shoe you were wearing. It was the one that was in the, the bit that you swapped. Wait, you I wasn't the currently shoe, wearing the shoe. When he threw it, <laughs> I wasn't in it. <laughs> was it your bowling shoe that was thrown or your own shoe? My own, your own shoe. shoe. Who was the guy that threw the shoe? I think his name was Chris. <laughs> and when, what year was this? Uh, it was the year 2012 AD. So you were... You were... <laughs> so we're, we're, who was the guy that threw the shoe? Uh, a friend of a friend. So what's he done? I'm getting my shoe. Right. We're leaving. OK. You know, the bowling expedition is yeah. coming to an end. Very right. sad time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's thrown the, sk the shoe at the skittle and... Um, uh, it wasn't just my shoe. What did he throw? There was a group of us. Yeah. And we were all leaving at once. Yes. And uh, he was part of the group, but he was sort of enjoying himself on a different level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was, I'd say there was a disagreement in the group as to on what level life should be lived. Yes. And he was on the very much the heightened, you know, I tomorrow imagine, we may die. So I can imagine you were lobbying <laughs> other members of the group to join yeah. your level of life enjoyment. <laughs> I, I was already very enjoyment. disappointed by the bowling alley's wine list. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he uh, this guy that threw the shoe, he was having a lovely time. Beer had been drunk. And uh, when some of us were trying to get our normal life shoes rather than, the, you know, the, the magic shoes of bowling... Do you, <laughs> do you get up in the morning and call them the normal life shoes? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Mummy! The normal life shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and the, number, the, normal the normal life vest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Think again. Today I shall have the skis of exceptional invention. <laughs> <laughs> so the shoes are being handed back, yeah. and this guy snatches runs past, them. snatches three or four shoes. Well, how many legs have you got? <laughs> no, they're, not, oh, the friends, sorry. they're on the counter at this right, point. Sorry. He, he chooses shoes, his sorry. moment yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with, frankly, with the accuracy of a sober man. Yes. <laughs> uh, and runs, and he do it with some sort of Viking shout of glee. Yeah. Chucks them towards the, what I now realise, are pins. Right. <laughs> you haven't said what the occasion was. Um, it was a stag do. A stag do for wow. one of your chunks. Uh, for a stranger. <laughs> I, was, I was the stripper. <laughs> uh, no, yes, a friend's stag do. And how does Rodney come into the story? He uh, worked at the bowling alley. Yes. Uh, I think still does. Yes. And uh, you, can't just, you can't just wander down. He went and he walked down one of the, uh, you know, the gutters. Did he? <laughs> and <laughs> retrieved the shoes. So did anything else happen on this stag night? Did they do anything to the, to the groom, like... Time to a lamppost, strip him naked, anything like that. Anyone get a steak pie down their pants? <laughs> no, no, because everyone had been invited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, we need an answer. So Lee's team is Rodney, Miles's distracted driver, Heston's sit up supporter, or David's bowling buddy? Well, this is difficult, isn't it? Because you would have thought that if Heston would have been that good at sit-ups, I, I feel I would, have, I would have known that. One of the flaws I see in David's story is the idea that there was all their... loads of their shoes were on the counter and he picked mm. up a load of shoes. Whereas, when you're in a bowling alley and you're getting your shoes back, there's one person giving the shoes back. Mm. Well, the flaw, I think, in David's argument is the amount of friends he claims to have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe Miles. I don't, don't believe Miles at all. You wouldn't just haunt somebody just because they were driving your old car. No. David I thought it was Heston, Heston David. You think, yeah. you think it's Heston or David? Yeah. You think it's. I think it's Heston. So that means that I'm going to take the mean average and say it's Heston and half of David. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that it's Heston. OK. Rodney, would you please reveal your true identity? Hi, I'm Rodney and I helped Heston break the world record for wow. City. <laughs> Thanks very much, Rodney. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's Lee. <laughs> Every time I make a cup of tea, I pretend I'm in the World Darts final and <laughs> test out my skill at throwing the tea bag in the cup. <laughs> David's team. Um, that's not exactly what you have to do in darts, is it? <laughs> <laughs> How far away from the cup do you stand to throw the bag? I do exactly four paces. Got large paces, so Rob, about six paces. <laughs> <laughs> and 
What sort of tea bags do you favour? Oh, the old David Mitchell chat up line. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the tea bag uh, of preference do is. Use a is... pyramid bag? No. Or a frisbee like uh, Tetley the... affair? <laughs> the little round ones, the round uh, ones. Because as we all know, if you're going to try and throw a pyramid shaped tea bag into a cup at four paces, well, you're an idiot. We all know that. <laughs> What's your success rate? Uh, about one in uh, one in ten. The way I do it is this: so you get three tea bags, you take your four paces, and then you do a little bit of a, you know, psych yourself up, pretend it's the world darts final, give yourself have, a, have bit... a pint of bitter. <laughs> yeah, you know, put on a bit of weight. Yeah, <laughs> get the uh, the tea bag, and then give myself a bit of pressure by saying to myself, <laughs> "Here he is, Lee Mack. <laughs> he needs to get one tea bag into the cup." to become the world darts champion. Can he do it? If you get it in the cup, do yeah. you then say 180? No, because there's only ones. I just go, one! <laughs> <laughs> but I'd use the end bit, I'd go, one! T! <laughs> throw three and then I'll go back and I'll gather the three and I'll do it again and then I'll give myself one final uh, throw of threes. This sounds remarkable and well, we're all now picturing it, aren't we? Yeah. In our minds. <laughs> yeah. what, how lovely it would be if we, yeah, if we had a yes, mug well, that's the thing. and if we had some tea bags <laughs> and if the mug, for example, got popped just on the desk there. Why don't you whoa, put it whoa, there? Well, that is far more than four paces. Yeah, you've got to come over here. You come over here. I tell you what, after this, we're going <clears> to <throat> forget all this truth and lies stuff. This is a much better game. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So what I do is I go up to the cup like that and I'll sort of do one, two, three, four. Yeah. I'll often do this. I'll look to my right, might put the kettle on, get it ready. And I'll often look, <laughs> often look to the left and go, Rob, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go Heston, the beans are burning, you were in charge of them. <laughs> David, put some clothes on. And then I'll... <laughs> and then I will... The trick is to get... You can't, you can't squeeze too hard because you've split the bag. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the trick is to give the, the tea bags a little shake and then you, you've got to get them compact. I mean, it's a bit disgusting, but a real little trick is if you've got sweaty palms, you'll get a bit more... You know what I mean? Bit more I mean I've got sweaty purchase. palms. Yeah, but I don't want you, because then I've got to drink the tea. Oh, right. You just and like you're a... not always going to be there for me, are you? <laughs> I <So>. am. <laughs> no, at least so you're not, David. <laughs> and then you put it onto your head... Lee, Lee, yeah? just say, you've obviously got quite a large kitchen. Uh, well, no, no, because now I'm, I'm now in the living room. <laughs> no, no, no. But you just said the kettle's there. Yeah, no, I keep my kettle in the living room. <laughs> School, why get up to make a cup of tea? You put it next to your sofa. <laughs> what an idiot. Right, and then you do that. You get it on your head like this. Yeah. Like that, and then you do that. <gasps> I'll tell you what, when it hits the cup, it's a lovely noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Now, at this point at home, I'll be going, because oh, look at this. This is actually turning into an event now. <laughs> and then I've got Lee Mack, who's only got six tea bags left, to become the world champion! <laughs> I have to make sure that this one goes in, otherwise, Joggy will send me in! <laughs> lovely, lovely. Well, there we are. So, what are you going to say then, David? Well, the thing is, it is difficult now because whether or not it's true, he's definitely going to do it from now on. <laughs> As am I. <laughs> Do you think it's a lie? I'm mm. not sure. I think it's true. Well, I think we're going to say true. You're going to say it's true. OK, Lee, truth or lie? It was, in fact, true. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Lee does pretend he's in the World Darts final every time he makes a cup of tea. Next. <coughs> it's David. There is something about me that elephants like. <laughs> I visit a zoo, they thunder towards me <laughs> and point their trunks in my direction. <laughs> right, please, team. When did you first notice elephants finding you so attractive? I don't think uh, elephants liked me before I hit puberty. <laughs> <laughs> and do you believe that puberty was the triggering thing? Correlation is not causation. <laughs> oh, another one of your catchphrases. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, they don't catch on, David. <laughs> <laughs> What's correlation? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> OK. Where were you? When did you first notice it? I think it was probably at the Cotswold Safari Park. <laughs> right. I'd recently become a man. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Quite, a, quite an imposing figure striding around the Cotswold Wildlife Park. Still intellectually juvenile, yeah. uh, and I was still interested in the animals. And then I was passing the elephant's enclosure, and it, you know, it, it swivelled its head towards me. And it was quite alarming. And then it started to move slowly towards me. And then yeah. as it moved towards me, its trunk ro it straightened. As, as if, as if in arousal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Have you ever been on safari? No, I haven't, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> How many zoological gardens, joke safari parks, have you been to and observed this in elephants? At least nine or ten sort of times. You play you, right? <laughs> I'll play the elephant. <laughs> to walk towards me and I'll... No, you. You've got to spot me. Mm. It's not about what I do, it's about... <laughs> it's exactly like... Is that, is that how it happens? Yes. Well... Wow. <laughs> there was something about being the elephant then. I believe it to be true. I was... <laughs> Have you always been with the same people or different people to the safari park? <laughs> I, I Has think it been that's... mixed up enough to know it's you specifically? Yeah, yes. The only person who's always with me is my friend Kevin the bun seller. Was he making that all up? What would you say? I don't believe it at all. <laughs> no. But there's not even an ounce of truth in it. <laughs> no. I think we're going to have to say it's a lie. OK, so you say it's a lie. David, attracting elephants, truth or lie? Well, it is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. <laughs> elephants don't thunder towards David and point their trunks in his direction <laughs> when he visits the zoo. Well, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have won by three points to two. <laughs> but it's not just a team game. My individual liar of the week this week is Miles Jupp. <laughs> yes, it's Miles Jupp. He's as honest as the day is long in the Arctic in the middle of the winter. Good night. <laughs>